if we were to look at ourselves through the lens of an experiment like we would an animal experiment, we think that animal is sick. Just how triggering are our phones when it comes to dopamine? Okay, great question. Uh, we often hear that, you know, that social media getting dopamine hit after dopamine hit. When we first get on social media after a long, for the first time or after a long period of time, the amount of dopamine that's released we think is quite substantial. It's novel. Remember, dopamine is about novelty, surprise, and the sense that we are on some exciting track. That's what dopamine is really about. It puts us into states of readiness, anticipation, looking, seeking, etc. almost always for things outside the confines of our skin. The thing about cell phones is when you first get on there and you haven't, let's say you're it, no Wi-Fi on the flight or something and you land, it can actually be quite stimulating. You get a lot of dopamine. Oh, there's this. Oh, there's that. But very quickly, when you're scrolling on social media, you're no longer getting the novelty, but you're continuing to do it. And you almost don't know why you're doing it. At that point, it shifts over to something that's a bit more like an obsessive compulsive behavior where the, we can define an obsessive compulsive behavior where the obsession leads to a compulsion. So the obsession is a thought, the compulsion is a behavior, but the acting out of the compulsion merely serves to increase the obsession. Right, this is very different than being obsessed with food or obsessed with cleanliness. There's no payoff. Right, exactly. There's no anxiety relief by carrying out the compulsion. With OCD behaviors, like scrolling social media, the dopamine quickly wanes and then you find that you're just sort of, and we've all been there, you're scrolling, and like, why am I doing this? This isn't that interesting. That isn't, this isn't that interesting. Now, the algorithms for social media are very clever and I don't want to demonize it. I, you know, provide a lot of, a lot of my life is spent on, you know, on social media now, but in the algorithms that they've incorporated function on the, the most powerful way to keep people doing a behavior or an animal for that matter is intermittent random reward or random intermittent reward that you don't know when you're going to hit the jackpot. So you're scrolling, you're scrolling, and then you see something. Typically it's very high what you know, in nerd speak, we'd say signal to noise. So if you're reading some interesting things, this came out in the news, this came out, and then it's all of a sudden a riot or a person that is jump, is base jumping off a building or, um, you know, for people that are, are scrolling, looking at bodies or something like that, uh, live bodies. Uh, hopefully people aren't looking at dead bodies. But look, if something's very tragic, then that has this gravitational pull. And then you, what happens is you start getting the system working for that next dopamine hit that you don't know when it's going to come. It's just like gambling. So I look at social media as initially being very dopaminergic, driving reward, surprise and excitement, but very quickly transitioning to something more like OCD and the kinds of behaviors where it looks, if you, if we were to look at ourselves through the lens of an experiment, like we would an animal experiment, we think that animal is sick. If you saw an animal digging in the corner, looking, 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 looking for a bone, the dog is looking, 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 you'd think that's really sad. That's us.